Bunny. Yes. I wanted to start off this episode, this 175th episode of the Pope on Film, America's longest running podcast. Yes. In in that, our podcast is just way too freaking long. Not that we've done the podcast for a long time. Right. We just have a very long fucking podcast, but that's beside the point. The point is, is that just because I'm being loud doesn't mean you guys can be loud to, like, combat me. Okay? Go to your room and be loud, dude. The point is, I want to start off this episode of the Pope on Film podcast by running through some small, odd bits of news. Bits of news that... Stop it! Bits of news that aren't entirely big enough for a full segment. But that I, I want to talk about anyway. I've got a few here. One, two, three, four. I've got uh, five. I, I've, okay. got a, I've got a, I've got some, a, a, I've got a smattering of news. The Pope out of, film presents. Hmm? Out of those, how many do you think I should have heard of? Oh, I don't know if you have heard of any of these. Okay. I don't think maybe one, but I don't maybe one or two, but I don't think you've heard of any of these. These ones are are, are small bits of news, not major bits of news. So the Pope on Film once again presents the Pope on Film News Smatterings. News Smatterings, yes. Yes, so this first story is out of Obviously, Florida. Yeah, this is a this is a Florida story. That's where all the the crazy news happens. A 34 year old man named Joseph Mantella was arrested at a park in Orlando uh, a a week or two ago. Uh, apparently, he was practicing karate in the park. Okay. You know, like you like to do, you go to the park and practice in karate. Yeah. I know you do that a lot. Totally. Go to the park and start working on your karate. I mean, is that how he and Jeannie met? Yeah, that's how he and Jeannie met. They were both in the park practicing karate. Well, in particular, see, this... in particular, Tai Chi for for our inner being. Ah, uh, gotcha. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't mean to mix that up. Yeah, this guy was, was practicting <laughs> fighting. Style karate, uh-huh. and uh, he, he did he someone... did he have a Klingon batleth? <laughs> no, that's the thing. He needed someone or something to help him practice karate. He needed like a sparring partner or like a dummy to work with, and 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 nothing was there to help him practice his karate. So what did he use? Well, he, he, he went through the park and fa- looked to see if there was anything he could work with, and then he found it. Swans. Swans! Okay. Motherfucker was beating the shit out of swans at the park. Bruce Lee's Enter the Squawk over here. <laughs> One 34-year-old man and a hundred... Uh, swans in a in a hallway. Bruce Lee's Enter the Squawk. Yeah. <laughs> Here's an actual quote from the article that I read this in. This is the quote. Quote, one witness said he kicked a swan in the backside as hard as possible and even kicked a sleeping baby duck. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know why that's hilarious to me. I I I, I have a question though. I okay. did did the geese like surround him and still yet only attack one at a time? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, they probably stood around him in a circle and patiently waited their turn to attack, just like they do in movies. Wait. There was a circle of. Okay. There was a circle of horrified onlookers, yeah. and apparently this guy thought that the onlookers that were shocked and disgusted were hilarious, and so he would laugh and then continue to beat the shit out of all of these swans. I, I, I have another question. I have another question. When, when, the okay. geese, when the geese honk, was it out of sync? Uh, good, good. I am honking at you. <laughs> 
I cannot believe you are kicking us. We are going to fly away now. Flap, 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 flap. <laughs> uh, okay, see, now, Bunny, I, Maxwell Edward Glenn, get out! Uh, sorry about that. Uh, here's my thing. I firmly believe with all those people and witnesses, there has to be video of this somewhere. Steve yeah. says there's not. I believe that there is. We just haven't looked hard enough. If if there's no video, I would have to d- doubt the veracity of the story, I think, these days. Right? Like, picture didn't happen, you know? I, I would be filming well, that in a fucking second. Well, it's Florida, so there's a good chance that there weren't any black people at this park. Yeah. If it happened in any other state, then there would be, like, one black person going, check this out, motherfucker is kicking swans. <laughs> get this, get this. You know, there would be one good video. That's true. Well, you never so know. I don't know. But um, yeah, we'll have to look for Blue- Bruce Lee's yeah, Enter the you. Squawk on YouTube. It's curious. Go. It's very curious. Here's okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. Odd- one, one last question. One last question here. Because I, I think we, we all glossed right over it. Did he win? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> It, as far as as far as I could tell, as far as I can tell from the article, the swans didn't defend themselves. The swans were taking off away from him. Why? Where's the, the picture? <laughs> it's by the TV. Why? I think Max will put them there. Why is the paper towel over here? Uh, here's another odd story. This happened a few weeks ago. A family in L.A. in Los Angeles. Yeah. Learn why here in Oklahoma we have our bouncy houses indoors. Okay. Because at a birthday party at a house in Adelanto, California, a, there was a breeze, there was a wind, a wind gush that was so strong that a bouncy house at a birthday party in a backyard was swept up in the air. And flew for miles with a nine-year-old boy inside of it. You want to sit in the chair? Really? Here's the best part. Here's the best part. The the bouncy house is airborne and it's flying in the sky with a nine-year-old boy inside. And then the bouncy house landed right in the middle of a busy. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, The bouncy house landed right in the middle of a busy California freeway. No. Wow. no. Okay. And the bouncy house was hit by a moving vehicle. Now there's good news. There's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that the nine-year-old boy survived with only minor injuries. That's good news. Yes. But here's the bad news. The bad news is that shit. If being in a bouncy house that suddenly flies into the sky, if that's not a way to be magically transported to a Sid and Marty Croft television show, <laughs> then how do you get magically transported into a Sid and Marty Croft television world? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Because that's how you get to Lidsville. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, no, I'm totally digging on that. I'm totally, yeah. Especially after the playlist, but we'll get there. Yeah, no, we'll get there. I was shocked that that show was Sid Marty Croft, but we'll get there. Here is another really odd story. This story shockingly did not happen in Florida. I was shocked to see that this did not happen in Florida. A 21-year-old man was kidnapped and tortured and held for ransom in Connecticut. The 21-year-old man who they haven't identified was bruised and beaten, and he had burns. He had scorch marks all over his body that police say were caused by a lighter. Okay. That apparently he was just being, he was uh, tied to a chair, and then he was untied to the chair and thrown on a bed, and they were just burning his body with a lighter. He was just burning his body in the light. There was only one kidnapper. Okay. But here's the best part. Here's the best part. The kidnapper was is a was a 30 year old man named Isaiah Garcia. Isaiah, not Isaiah. Yeah. Apparently, it's two of this one guy. So Isaiah. Was he Garcia. a doctor? I don't know. I don't know. But I'll tell you this: Isaiah Garcia kept his victim in place because he also had with him a fucking alligator. <laughs> A, ju- a big ass 
fucking alligator. So the victim was being held for ransom, and if the family didn't pay, then the victim was going to be fed to the alligator. And if I put her in the chair, she'll make your So all of this was discovered. All of this entire story was discovered. They finally found the the kidnapping, the kidnapper, because the, the victim was left alone in the hotel room for a while with the alligator. And then he went. He 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 managed to find a cell phone in the hotel room, made a call, and that's how authorities traced the call and found Isaiah Garcia and the victim, and the alligator in a hotel room in Shelton, Connecticut. Okay. One last bit of. Uh, I I, uh, I, of, uh, I have some questions on this one too. I, 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 I no you know, but I'm still not done with the details. Okay, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Isaiah Garcia and uh, the man-eating alligator, they were asking for how much how much ransom do you think they were asking for? Mm, $538.76. Okay, okay, here's the thing. You're close. <laughs> they were asking for $800. Okay. Wow. So, okay, so I have a few questions and maybe some yeah. design notes. First off, bro. Yeah. I don't mean to tell you how to kidnap. <laughs> you know, I. So, what, you're telling me how to kidnap now? I'm going to cut you. But. Uh, Isaiah Garcia needs to value his time more. Yes, yes. You know, he needs to value himself, value his work, value what he does. When when Natasha and I were trying to figure out how much I should charge for my story time, I was like, oh, I, I don't want to cost that much. Maybe, I don't know, $50, $75. And Natasha's like, it has me by the shoulders, and she's just looking at me, and she's like, value your time. Value yourself. You are worth money you are worth things and i kind of want to do this to the kidnapper yeah like what only eight hundred dollars come on you got an alligator you put in the time and the effort you know i value your yeah i am wondering if after he checked into the hotel did the valet have to carry the alligator up to the room yeah, that's that's another thing. Um, worst hotel employees ever. Yeah. If you're allowed to bring an alligator in there. What, was this not... Uh, maybe it's a very alligator-friendly hotel. You know, maybe they, 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 maybe they found their niche, you know? And they're... they're that's, that's why I'm... That's why I'm shocked that this didn't happen in Florida. Yeah. Like, when you say, oh, he, he had an alligator. He was in a hotel room in, with an alligator in Florida. That's when you go, oh, okay. But no, he was in Connecticut with an alligator. Yeah. There's not much swampland in Connecticut. And also $800. That will barely cover your hotel room expenses. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I... I, I'm shocked. I'm... So even if he gets the money, this kidnapper is going to be operating at a loss. Yeah, yeah. I want to give like a. I want to give like a how to kidnap TED talk. <laughs> you know, for this guy. So for this next story, I'm going to be talking a little bit, just a little bit about my 12 year old daughter Isabella. Okay. Her school is constantly fundraising, which shouldn't be surprising because we live in Oklahoma and there's yeah. no money for anything. There's just no money for for anything anywhere. And the last fundraising thing that well, your 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 teachers are being whining babies. Remember that? Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Why can't they just say thank you and go back to work? Yeah. Um, the last fundraising thing that Bella's that Bella did was. It was from a knife company. Okay. 
It was from a, a knife company. Sure. It, it, Don't let anybody touch the stuff. I'm going to put the baby down for a nap. Okay. Sure, there were multiple kitchen utensils and items that were also available in the catalog, but mostly knives. Big ass, sharp fucking knives. But in Bella's class, seventh grade, the kids weren't allowed to sell any knives to anyone under 18 years of age. Now, yeah, they couldn't say they couldn't sell them. Period to anyone. Yeah, because the, the kids were underage, and, and what I'm thinking is maybe Bella's school should go talk to the third graders in the town of Neosho, Missouri. Okay, mm-hmm. what are they selling? Neosho, Missouri, a youth baseball team for kids nine years old and younger. Some of them like. Six years old, five years old, four year old, three year old yeah. kids are doing fundraising right now and they're selling tickets to a raffle where the winner gets a free AR 15 rifle. Wow. Yeah. 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 Great timing, you fuckballs. Well, the, the protest that I had gone to the other weekend was, was because the GOP itself was raffling off two AR-15s. Yeah. Like, like I don't know about you, but that's a big middle finger, don't you think? Yeah, no, it absolutely is. That's a big, like, eh, fuck you people. Yeah. The coach of this youth basketball team, uh, baseball team, the coach considered raffling off something else after whenever the last school shooting happened because they're happening all the time now. Yeah. But the coach, Mr. Levi, Mr. Levi, I'm a douchebag Patterson said that he ultimately decided to continue on with the raffle and quote, turn it into a positive thing after quote, getting the hate. <laughs> so, yeah. That's also a big, that's also a big middle finger. Yeah. Man, it's noisy here today. Sorry about that. What was that? That was my phone. Church bells? Oh, it was your phone. Okay. That was that was weird. And finally, Bonnie, I have some super great fucking news for you. I know okay. you'll be excited. There's a new doomsday prediction. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this prediction comes from noted biblical numerologist david mead david yeah. is and uh he he's he's predicted he's he's predicted a number of of biblical prophecies that the world was going to end last year he predicted that the world was going to end on april 23rd of 2018 now, a lot of people predict the end of the world, but David Mead's predictions always have some pizzazz to them. Yeah, okay. For example, he predicted that on April 23rd of 2018, the world was going to end because a mysterious alien planet named Nibiru was Nibiru. going to collide uh-huh. with Earth. Yeah. And and shocker of shockers, David Mead's B- uh, Bible prophecy was wrongzo. Uh, that was a big shocker there. Yeah. Well, now See, I, 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 is- I don't, okay, okay. Uh, here's what I don't get. Okay, here's what I don't get. Why are they so concerned about this mysterious planet Nibiru? Okay, of which, like all conspiracy claims, they have no proof. They have no evidence. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Uh, when there's a personal, when there's a, when there's a perfectly good asteroid named Apophis that is literally heading for us. Okay. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's real shit going on. Have fun with that. (laughs) David Mead has proof. It's called Bible math. It's called Bible math, okay. Bible math. So, so if David, Johnny, if Johnny has three foreskins, and Susie has two, how many foreskins do they have all together? And what was God's like fucking that. foreskin fetish? Uh-huh. 
while I'm while why did David have to go and collect two hundred foreskins? That's a lot of foreskins. Yeah. Uh, while I'm doing this ah. podcast, maybe later you can do this with him. Maybe. You guys can do that together, build it, and all that. Good. You know. Um. So I, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I, he got them from their enemies, but you know what? Huh? Maybe if you didn't cut off foreskins, you'd have fewer enemies. <laughs> yeah. So, so cutting out those wait. Is, so cutting out brand wait. New prediction after okay, hold on, Jeannie's hold on, third. hold on. Genie's got. I was gonna say. So is cutting off those foreskins? Is that akin to like uh, scalping? Scalping. I I would guess so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do it like as imagine. revenge. Like I hate you, so I'm yeah. gonna take your foreskin. I think it would have made Inglorious Bastards a little more interesting. <laughs> sure, <laughs> not nah. right. I want a hundred Nazi foreskins. <laughs> yeah. And I want skins. <laughs> so, Dave, so David Mead said, oh, the world is ending on April 23rd, 2018. 2000, and then April 23rd, 2018 came and went. So then David Mead went back to the Bible and crunched the numbers. And now he's back with an updated new prediction. And this time it definitely has his trademark, his trademark, David Mead pizzazz. So according to David Mead's, my mouse just died, there you go. According to David Mead's new Bible prophecy, this, this one's a weird one. So the rapture is going to take place, he's a bit vague that. This time, the rapture is going to take place at some point this year between May and December. Yeah. So May and Christians December. Are... That's a yeah, wide so... ass gap he's given himself. I, I, I think it... I got to call shenanigans on that shit. I'll just call yeah. Hmm. yeah uh, so, but that's not all. But that's not all. So, the world, the rapture is going to take place. The rapture is going to take place at some time between May and December of this year. And then after that, there will be seven years of tribulation followed by 1,000 years of peace and prosperity. And then the world's going to end. Oh. Mm, basically, right. Basically, that's how it goes in the Bible. Yeah, but here's the thing. Number one, nice vague timeline, David Mead. Number two, so you're telling me we're going to get 1,000 years of peace and prosperity without Christians? <laughs> yeah, good point. I'm pretty excited for the end of the world now. You know, sure, we're going to have to go through seven years of crap, but, you know, if Trump has his way, we're already going to go through eight mm -hmm. years of crap, you know? Yeah. So... I, I'm excited for, uh, you know, 1,000 years of peace and prosperity without evangelical Christians uh, yelling down my throat about everything. I'm kind of excited about everything. that. I think that'll be <laughs> Yeah. You know? Anyway, that is it for The Pope on Film Presents News Smatterings this time around. Be sure and join us next time, whenever that is, whenever I find things that are funny. And cut on that.